areas of life, and it seems like everything we do, we somehow come up short of our goals. And we just ask that you would help us to let go of that striving and discover that fullness of life doesn't come from human striving, but it comes from resting in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. So, hard to believe we're already just about to 2016. And as I was looking at that, it made me think about where I was at about 10 years ago, in 2006. At that time, I'd been a pastor in North Minneapolis about six years. And for those of you that don't know that area of the country, if you've just lived in the South, it might be hard to believe this, but you go to that area of the world, and you can't shake a stick without hitting a Lutheran church. Um, there's a lot of them up there. And back in the 50s and 60s, these big church buildings were all full of people when the whole neighborhood in North Minneapolis was Norwegian and Swede and German. But when I was a pastor there in 2000, um, the neighborhood was not full of Norwegians and Swedes and Germans. And those big church buildings were pretty empty. As a matter of fact, a lot of them were looking at whether they needed to close their doors. And during that time, I just kept working harder and harder. I wanted to find the latest program and the church growth plan and all the things. The more I got stressed, the harder I tried to make things work on my own, to the point where I was just ready to give up. So luckily I had a sabbatical that showed up about the right time in 2006. And many times people do sabbaticals in a way that I think might almost be counterproductive, where you actually get busier during your sabbatical than you were when you were actually working, because you're taking classes and you're writing books and you're doing devotions and you're doing all this stuff. Luckily, I was smart enough to just say, I don't need more programs. I don't need to learn more stuff. I just need to reconnect with God. And during that time, during that sabbatical time, I had some really powerful times of just opening up and experiencing God's love and God's presence in a way that just refreshed me, in a way that learning some new skill about church growth never would have done. And as I was thinking about that, it made me think about what Advent is about in the church. For those of us that have grown up in churches like the Lutheran Church that follows the church calendar and the church year, um, you know the whole progression of how Advent is the beginning of the church year. As a matter of fact, I worked at a camp in Wisconsin. That's where I learned the order of the church year because all the cabins were in the order of the different seasons of the church year. So I got to learn that. But throughout the different seasons, for those of you that sort of follow that stuff, there's two seasons during the church year that are really focused on preparation. So what do you think those two seasons are? Yep. Lent and Advent. Okay, good job, Grace. Thank you. So Lent and Advent are times that historically we take time to prepare ourselves. But I think sometimes when we hear of seasons of preparation, what's our first response as humans? What do I need to do? What program can I follow? How can I work a little harder to be prepared during this season of preparation? And what I want to encourage you this Advent is maybe that's not what you need to do. Maybe it's not what three or four new devotions do I need to be doing during this season of Advent. Maybe it's a time to just slow down and say, God, who I really need to connect with is you. So, once again, I feel hypocritical giving you a devotion that you can use this week. But the whole point is, that devotion reminds you to connect with God each day. So if you do that. Um, when I look at the reading, uh, John the Baptist came proclaiming a baptism for the repentance, or baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Each year I have a, there's a certain person I read his commentaries and sermon preparation, and each year I need to be reminded of this. That whenever he comes to this verse, he talks about how we often don't understand what that repentance is to look like. That often, what do we think of when we think of repentance? We think of, I've got to work harder. I've just got to straighten this thing out. I've got to buckle down. I've got to make this work. And he says that we make repentance into an I can experience. It's something I can do if I just work hard enough. And he said that that's not really what repentance is meant to be. That repentance is meant to be an I can't experience. It's coming to that place where we've tried it on our own strength, and we realize that we can't do it ourselves. And then we're understanding what it means to be prepared for what God wants to do in our lives. 
So really, isn't that the whole picture of the readings of Advent? It's not prepare the way for you to get to the Lord, but it's prepare the way so the Lord can get to you. And when He comes, it's not you need to fill in your valleys and lower your mountains and straighten your paths so that you can get to God, but that when God gets to you, He will lift up your valleys and He will lower your mountains and He'll straighten out your paths. And isn't that what we pray for during Advent? We don't pray, Lord, help me to find you, but come. Come, Lord Jesus. So come, Emmanuel. So, just want to invite you to think about what your orientation toward Advent is this year. Is it a time where you're going to buckle down and just work harder because you feel disconnected from God? Or is it a time to just let God meet you where you are and love you? As I was thinking about my own journey this Advent, there's three words that I want to have define my journey this Advent. And none of them are words that are about what I'm going to do. But they're all words about what I need God to do for me this Advent. And those three words are come, begin, and complete. I think many times we get caught up in thinking that church is all about human activity. It's about what we do so we can get to our desired destination. But what if the whole point of church is not about human activity to get to our desired destination, but it's about human openness allowing God to get to His desired destination, which is in our lives. And the prayer for that is to simply come. Here, I've got one more trivia, and probably Grace, if you know this, I'm going to be really impressed. Because <laughs> there's nobody that do it in the last service. But there is a, a place in the Bible that this church window refers to. Does anybody know what chapter of the Bible that refers to? Revelation 3. There is, a, in Revelation 3, Jesus is speaking to the church in Laodicea. And he's talking about how they've gotten to the place where instead of being this vibrant community, they're just sort of lukewarm. They're going through the motions. And the whole point is, you think, well, you're, you're lacking, you're slacking, you're coming up short. So my response would be Jesus sending this whole list of things you need to do to straighten yourself out. But what does Jesus give as the way to get out of that problem? He doesn't say, here's a list of ten things you need to do to start shaping up. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens, I will come in and eat with them. So, when you're burned out, when you're going through the motions, when you're not connected and things aren't working, Jesus doesn't send a to-do list about how disappointed He is. He says, why don't you let me come in? So many times we start with all of our own human efforts to try to clean things up and make them look better. But even John the Baptist out in the wilderness, it makes me wonder why he had so many people come out that said that all of Jerusalem, all of Judea came out to John in the wilderness. And I've got a sense is that by that point in history, religion had gotten pretty heavy and people were getting pretty weighed down. And I think they were at the place where they were just going through the motions feeling like I can't do enough. And so what does John the Baptist do? He offers this sense of maybe there's something more than just going through the motions of faith. So he invites them to something more, preparing the way for the one who will baptize them in the Spirit, who will lead them into the fullness of God's activity in their life. So come, maybe that's where you're at today. Maybe this Advent is not a time to get busy or doing more things to impress God. But maybe it's time to just say, I surrender, I can't do it, I need you to come and just heal my heart and fill me with your love. So if that's where you're at, I pray that you will allow him to come and do what only he can do. But the second word is begin. And when I think about um, when I invite God into my heart, into my life, when, when Jesus comes in, he doesn't come in just to twiddle his thumbs and do nothing. He comes in to accomplish God's purposes in our lives, to destroy the works of the devil, to bring abundant life. So when we invite him in, it's not just, and this is where I have issues, for Christians, don't we have a tendency to just show things about ourselves that are the ones that look clean and are pretty nice and presentable? That at church, how many of us are sharing our deepest and darkest struggles with each other? We just want to look good to each other. 
And I think often when we invite God in too, it's like we invite God into those parts of our lives that we think we're doing okay. Because we're afraid of inviting him into those places where we're not doing okay. And when Jesus comes in, maybe the place you're at this year is it's time to invite him to come into some rooms that you haven't given him access to in the past. To invite him into that anger that you're not letting go of toward your aunt. Or to let him into that betrayal that you haven't forgotten about your ex-spouse. Or to invite him into that addiction that you just sort of pretending isn't happening. And Because I think oftentimes we don't want Jesus to come in it because we think he'll discover how bad we are, as if he doesn't already know. But the whole point is, when Jesus comes in, it says in John 3 that he didn't come to condemn. He came to save. So, why do we want to invite him into some of those rooms we've kept sealed off to begin his work in us? Because he loves us. Because he's the only one that can begin the work that needs to happen in that area of our lives. So maybe that's where you're at. You've invited him in sort of to the entryway of your life, but you've never invited him to begin something in some of those closed areas of your heart or your life. And finally, my third word for this Advent is complete. Paul writes to the church in Philippi, the one who began a good work in you will complete it. And I think my tendency is that I ask for help to the point where I get to the place where I think I can take it from there myself. I don't know if anybody else does that, but I'll cry out to God and say, I need help, I need help. Okay, I'm doing okay, God, you can go away. I can take it from here. And I think many of us get to that place, and maybe that's where you're at, that God has brought you just enough freedom from something that you could move forward, keep staggering, stumbling forward, or God has brought you to a place where you think you can take it from there yourself. And maybe the invitation for you this Advent is to say, God, no, don't go away. You're the one who got me this far. And I don't want to just sort of live this half-life where I'm just barely stumbling forward on my own strength. But I need you to complete the work you've begun in my life. So this Advent, I just want to invite you to think about what is it that you need. That maybe the temptation is to go and say I need to do three or four different spiritual disciplines so I can prepare for Christmas. I need to just push harder and work harder. Maybe that's not the point. Maybe the point is just to say, I just need to rest in your arms. I just need to have you come into those areas of emptiness and brokenness. Just take some time to pray each day. Say, God, these places stink. These places are awful. These places I don't even like looking at. And I need you to come in there and do in those areas what I can't do myself. I just need you to come. I don't need more programs. I just need to be reminded you love me. I don't need a list of spiritual disciplines. I just need to know what it's like to experience your rest and your peace. So my prayer for you is that he would get access, because when he knocks and you open it up, it's not he might come, he will. And when he comes in, he doesn't just stand and do nothing, he does something. And when he begins something, he will complete it. Amen.